give uh, Coach Brennan and San Jose State credit for the second half. Uh, I think you get five plays up over 50 yards. That That's uh, obviously not going to give you an opportunity to be successful. Give up over 50 points. Uh, never done that before. Obviously not going to be a chance to get successful. Uh, they stole the momentum with the, the slip screen for the first play touchdown um, on the, in the second half. And then we go three and out on offense and, and don't get a stop again. And I thought that momentum, that 14 point swing uh, was the difference. It, it kind of set the stage. We weren't obviously able, able to overcome it. Uh, got to coach them better, obviously. Lack of discipline if you got 15 penalties and the dead ball penalties killed us, especially in the second half offensively, getting behind the chains. Uh, we're not good enough. I mean, we, I think we were three or five on third of uh, third and long in the first half. That's unheard of. You're, you're, you're getting, uh, you're playing on borrowed time when you do that. And we're not good enough. I mean, we're pretty good offensively when we can stay in front of the sticks and, and move the ball. When we, uh, when we get behind the chains, especially when it's self-inflicted, obviously we're not very good. And uh, really disappointed in the, in the second half performance because I thought we played pretty good football in the first half against a good football team. I mean, one in five, everybody talks about that. San Jose State's a good football team. I mean, our league is comparative top to bottom. I uh, thought we were in that mix. Obviously, for 30 minutes, we can be. So we have to coach them better, make more better adjustments in the second half, and be more disciplined so we don't get behind the chains and, and kill ourselves on either side of the ball. So I'll answer any questions. With all those, like, those false starts, hmm? all these penalties, what was kind of the read there, even that like, first drive, the first couple of drives? Obviously, we're, uh, we did some stuff where we're trying to see the formation and do some dummy calls, and, and O-linemen are holding in there, and they got to they gotta hold the uh, – the stance and then come off the ball when it's time. I mean, that's uh, we, they know it's coming. We got to do a better job of executing it. And if we can't do a better job of executing it, we got to eliminate that from our game plan and just go out there and snap the ball. Uh, we have a lot better, and obviously it worked when we were able to do it right. The advantages it gives us are significant when uh, we focus and concentrate. And when we don't, it obviously puts us behind the chains. <laughs> they ran the exact same plays in the second half they did in the first half. Uh, when they got some momentum, obviously, they were knocking us off the ball better off defensively. And then, uh, like I said, getting behind the chains gives you almost no chance of being successful if, you, if you're not, um, I mean, it, any offense. I mean, they, when they would get their, their uh, behind the chains, I mean, it, it causes them to struggle. So, I mean, it, I wish they were running different plays and, and made some fancy adjustment. They didn't. They outplayed us. For you guys, Coach, offensively in the second half, as far as anything you guys were trying to do or maybe things that weren't happening, just to get that off of the offensive momentum, I mean, what was going on in the second half? Well, I mean, the very, the very first one, we get a, a good play on first down. Uh, we get a, a holding penalty. Uh, second play, we get a false start, so now we're really behind the chains, throw an incomplete pass, and then third down. And then the next series, uh, we throw an interception. I mean, um, Dylan threw the ball a little bit short, Jeremiah's coming open, uh, Jer but Dylan had some pressure on him. We didn't hold the, hold the line long enough, so combination. I mean, give them credit. They, they're long, and they made some good plays. Uh, but then that 14-point swing uh, obviously made a significant difference because they came out again, and they got the long punt return. Uh, we got to do a better job in the secondary, uh, both corner and safety, of, of teaching them to – relax and play ball when the thing's coming. I mean, the guy tripped in front of Zach, and if Zach just avoids him, it's not a pass interference penalty. His hand goes to his back, and they call it. Uh, Noah was in good shape. One of our safeties was in good shape on a cover two. They throw a post. We hit him early. We extend drives. Instead of it being third and 15, it's first and 10. I mean, those are, are little things that we obviously have to coach him better. Uh, we have to play better at the same time. Uh, but we can't. We're not good enough to, to almost not play perfect. We're, we can be a good football team when we play with discipline. I thought in the first half we did. Uh, the block punt was significant. Had an assignment error on the block punt, and it kept them in the game. I mean, it could have been 17-7 at halftime with more momentum. I thought we did a nice job getting off the field on defense in the first half. Uh, give them credit on the touchdown run. That was a good call by their, uh, their OC, ran inside zone. We had the uh, safety and corner. We, I mean, we had some pressure up front. We had two guys off the ball that, that overplayed the run. He cut it back and scored a touchdown. Or, I mean, it might be 17-3 at halftime. No ands, ifs, or buts. We, gotta, we can't have assignment stairs on, on special teams. With special teams had been a, uh, a positive round here. Obviously, it hadn't. We took the fair catch. I mean, they give, uh, give them credit for what they do on kickoff. It's hard. They, they do 
onside, pop up. Six, we drop a ball, start on the six yard line. I mean, that's a lack of focus, lack of concentration. We got to make sure that we catch that ball and get good field position on the 25. Uh, obviously, uh, as a football team, we need to, we, as coaches, we need to prepare them better so that we catch the ball. We don't jump off sides. We don't uh, miss tackle. I mean, we don't run. We run our feet through tackles instead of diving. I mean, all those things. That's. It seems like the, they had a little bit of room to return on some of those kickoffs. Was there some strategy going on? That... Uh, well, after obviously after they they blocked the first one, uh, we got to make sure that it doesn't get blocked. And they did a good job of holding us up. And then Aaron Aaron has an unbelievable leg. We need to get a little bit more height as opposed to kicking at 60 yards. Because if you get 60 yards and you're you're sitting back in protection a little bit. Uh, much like the NFL, in the NFL, they can't leave until the ball's kicked. In college, you can leave as soon you can, all, all five of them can leave. Uh, they, had a, they did a good job schematically. I mean, obviously, we had the assignment error on the first block punt. Uh, number 18 does a great job of getting back there. So we had to leave a couple guys extra in protection that we normally don't. Uh, and then Aaron out kicked the coverage a couple times. Uh, but once again, give them credit. They're, they've got some athletes on that punt return team that uh, gave us some problems. Obviously, I mean they're they're frustrated. Um, they're they're frustrated with losing. They're frustrated with having the early success. Uh, we'll we'll do some things differently in practice to get them going because obviously what we're doing isn't working, and we obviously have enough talent to to compete and be competitive and be in it. Uh, we can't when we have penalties and and give up one play touchdowns. I mean we had five plays over 50 yards. That's 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 embarrassing, and, and we'll address it during the week. But we'll have to come up with something different to. To obviously come out with a second start, we did. We've, we've done a couple of different things. Obviously, that worked. So we'll keep we'll keep going to the drawing board. So you talking about Zach on the sideline after that uh, that DBI? Hmm? Uh, what was that conversation like? What were you just talking? About? Um, I asked him what the what the DB what the receiver did in front of him. He said he slipped because uh, what it looked like on the and what the referee came over to me because I told him the guy slipped. What the referee came over to me and said it. He said when he did when their feet got tangled up that Zach's hand went to his back, and that's why they called it. If Zach would have went to play the ball, uh, I was trying to see if Zach, if the guy fell in front of him, that was my conversation. I said, well, just try to avoid him next time. I mean, that, that was a unlucky, I mean, if you look at it on the, on the Jumbotron, uh, when I first saw it live, I thought Zach pushed him, down, pushed him down when the ball was getting there. Uh, he didn't, the guy tripped up on the turf and Zach ran into him and, and put his hand on his back trying to avoid him. And they call pass interference. That, that, that one was unlucky. The one on Noah, he just went too early. I mean, we got to relax and make plays. I mean, that's it's a DB's world. You're going to be on the, you're going to be on, on, have an opportunity at one on ones. You got to make a play. Dante was uh, out for a couple series. On the, uh, on the, uh, the blind side block, um, he got Dante pretty good. Uh, banged up his knee a little bit. Uh, we decided to go with Marvin and Bryson. Uh, and make sure that Dante was okay because we got six games left, and he was uh, he was struggling after that blindside block. What was your read about how Marvin performed tonight in particular? How he did? Uh, I, I, don't, I mean, he made a nice play in the end zone without watching it. Uh, I mean, I'll watch it and have a better idea on on Tuesday, but he didn't give up any big touchdowns. So, and he made a nice play in coverage. Uh, Marvin's gotten better every single week. Uh, Marvin had, had earned opportunities. I mean, we'd been mar working Marvin, and I think he played. 30 plays last week. He probably played 45 tonight. Uh, I mean, Marvin's good enough to play 30 plays, and, and if you don't notice he's in there, that means he's doing a good job. There's a few of San Jose State's chunk plays. It looked like you, know, you guys were trying to rip the ball away. You always want to try to create turnovers, hmm? but you know, there were 10 plus yards afterwards. Is there a point where you guys were the Absolutely. It's the first guy. The first guy is uh, supposed to secure the tackle, and then the third, fourth, and fifth guy try and knock the ball out. Obviously, we didn't get, uh, we didn't get the ball, we didn't get the, the runner wrapped up. The very first one, the first play of the third quarter, uh, I thought Gabe had a good angle on the guy, got pushed from behind. I thought it could have been a clip, they didn't call it. And then they did a nice job with the secondary. I mean, their, 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 t their tailback slip screen game is pretty good. They got Boise for an 80-yard one last week. We practiced a ton this week. I mean, I thought Gabe had a good angle on him. I thought, our, I mean, it's usually you can defeat those things with pursuit. Uh, they did a nice job blocking in the secondary and then give Kyrie probably a little bit faster than I thought he was going into the game. He scooted down the sideline and, and uh, we had a hard time catching up to him. How long had that, um, that Hopkins walking off direct snap to Corey Krause, how long had that been kind of in the bag for you guys? Uh, 
that's, that, that's been a play. Coach, Coach V's put that in. I mean, we've had that for a while. It, 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 you got to do it when it, the opportunity presents itself to you. Uh, how they, I mean, you got you to go through everything. How do they adjust to plays? How do they adjust when you come up to the line of scrimmage and you give a, a dummy snap? Do they look to the sideline and change? Do they, do they not? Do they, what do their D linemen do? Do they go to a knee? Do they, what they, what is the, what's going to give you an advantage? I mean, it, it worked to perfection. I mean, gave us the 17 14 lead. Dylan did a nice job. The O line executed it. Bill did a great job. I mean, there's, Coach, he's got that opportunities. You, if you scout people enough, you can find some things that will give you an advantage. And obviously, we needed to do something like that to get an advantage. Anything else? Yeah, I mean, just as a whole, I mean, you know, going into that locker room and like, I mean, what was the vibe in that locker room after this? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're heartbroken and disappointed. Uh, they had full expectation of winning the football game. They came in at halftime. Uh, we made some we made some adjustments. Obviously, uh, not the right ones because they came out and made more plays than us. I thought the attitude at halftime was great. They were excited. We talked about the the issues that that both teams have had in the third quarter. I mean, they'd been outscored 56-7, whatever. We'd been outscored. Uh, which team's going to make the the difference? Obviously, it was them tonight, which is disappointing because I, our guys were just as excited to play as they were in the first half. I thought they came out with a lot of fire and, and played their tails off. Uh, they made more plays and, and uh, out physical us in the second half, which was disappointing. When you talk about making the wrong adjustments, the right adjustments, I don't. what goes into that process? Or? Well, I mean, if, if they're doing something successfully, then you have to do something better. I mean, I thought in the first half, uh, they ran the they ran inside zone on third and six and and popped it for a touchdown. That was the only real positive play they had. I think that 140 yards of total offense in the first half, 150 something like that. Uh, they were two or four on third down. That one being one of them. So what we were doing was working. Obviously, we hadn't called everything that we had in the game plan in the second half. And then offensively, we had done some things. We had stayed in front of the chains. We 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 did uh, convert some third and longs, which uh, you can't live. On converting third and longs because it's not a, I mean, it's it's not usual, it's not typical. And then come out of the second half, and we were in a zone defense that should be okay against the slip screen. You get off a block, defeat a block, chase it down. They blocked a couple of us and and uh, outrun us. Uh, I mean, that wasn't a, that wasn't an adjustment on either side of the ball. They ran the slip screen early in the game. We tackled it for a two yard loss. So, I mean. Giving them, giving them. So obviously, we're gonna have to give them something different in practice to change the the idea and the momentum. But we're not getting out schemed. We got they made more plays than us tonight. I've asked you this question before after games and the like too. I mean, if comparing this to situations that were similar that you've been in before, hmm? what did you guys do and what were those situations? I mean, obviously, the uh, way we do things around here, we practice our tails off. We practice hard to play hard. Uh, you can't. And we got some guys that are a little beamed up. Uh, about the the obviously the first half, we looked fresher than we did in the second half. Obviously, we still need to continue to recruit for depth. Uh, we've played a ton of true freshmen in the in the past. We're probably going to have to start playing some of those guys. That uh, with the guys that we have, the the starters taking the majority of the reps, getting a little bit worn out. Um, I mean, we've got to change some of those things up. Obviously, we have to address, not just address, eliminate the penalty issue, and then that'll give us a chance to to continue to be competitive. The thing I love about that locker room is they're heartbroken, disappointed, they'll show up ready to fight tomorrow. And that's the type of kid we have in that locker room. Coach, after Wyoming, you said that was the first time you'd really seen tackling issues on your team. Do you think that changed tonight, or what did you see with that? I will, we'll, I will watch the tape to have a better idea. I, I, don't, I didn't see us bouncing off of guys. I mean, you're going to have your typical, I mean, guys will bounce off, but if you get good pursuit and knock them down and all those good things, on the long touchdown, I don't, I don't think we had uh, – I mean, they did a nice job of skiing it up and blocked us, and, and I, we didn't bounce off of them. I thought Gabe had a good angle to him, uh, didn't, make the, didn't make the play. Um, we missed a couple of tackles early in the game, not untypical from, from what we've always done. The pursuit usually handles that. It handled it in the first half. Uh, they, they, made it, they had good athletes that made us miss in the second half, and that was disappointing because I think we uh, – I mean, uh, it was they were running the same plays in the second half. I mean, if it's if they're running new plays, then they made some fabulous adjustments schematically, then we'd have an issue. Uh, we got to obviously continue to address how hard they practice and, and getting to the ball and not giving up big plays. What was your read on um, you know how you guys worked to some you know corral Cordero to a degree? I mean, you, you guys you guys did make it uh, good stretches, but I, mean, what was... I thought in the first half. Uh, 
we had a couple of uh, short side contain issues that allowed him to, they completed the ball in the second quarter. They completed the, the one that got down to the touchdown drive. It was a second long. Our uh, contain uh, to the boundary got knocked down. And then Shevin Cordero, I mean, he scrambled around and found the tight end for about a 15 yard gain. Um, outside of that, he didn't hurt us with his legs. It, I mean, it was the, it was the short T-slip screens and, and those things. And then, then when they got up by 21, they started running the ball. I think they, they out physical us a little bit there in the end of the third and the fourth quarter. Uh, but I, it wasn't, it wasn't him running. And it, I mean, it wasn't even him throwing the ball over the top tonight. That hurt us. It was the short plays and the, or the T-slip screens. And then the, the, uh, now obviously the fourth, the third and one, we sold out to stop the run, and we get beat on a double move. We got we to gotta be able to, to make that play, and I you know, have all the faith in the world with the young man that was out there. So we'll put him in that position again and continue to make it. All right, thanks, guys. Go Lobos.